CDL Roster Mania got even crazier yesterday with the announcement that Sib is a restricted free agent and Cloud9 are looking to be targeting Scrap to replace him. Today, we're going to talk about these Roster Mania news and then head into the Roster Mania tracker and update with predictions. But this news that came out yesterday that Sib is going to be a restricted free agent and that he's allowed to explore his options definitely was surprising, but for sure spices up Roster Mania. It was looking like it was going to be a pretty tame offseason, honestly. I mean, Insight obviously tweeted out he's a restricted free agent. And we did go on to learn that all of the Toronto Ultra players are restricted free agents. They've done this in the past, so it doesn't mean they're all leaving. But it does look like we're going to actually have some shifts, at least in those two top four teams. And then according to CDL Scrim Intel, sources are saying that C9 is going to try and do everything they can to bring Scrap in from Toronto Ultra. Now, obviously, this makes sense, right? If you're going to release Sib, you got to think you have a pretty good replacement lined up. And when you think about who could possibly replace Sib, I mean, Scrap is obviously number one option. Draza potentially, but I don't see FaZe making a change. Maybe you look at someone like Ghosty. But other than that, I really don't think anyone is going to be coming in for Sib other than Scrap that that would fill this role to what they're looking for. And Scrap did say on stream, now this could be bait, and we'll talk about it in a second, but he said, from what it looks like, I might be playing somewhere else. This is a direct quote from this uh, clip here from his stream. Obviously, when roster mania and rumors and everything is going on, when your team or your as a player is involved in it, you go live on Twitch, you get thousands of viewers, you get tons of chatters and engagement. So could potentially be bait, obviously, here from Scrap, but it could also have some truth. But with Cloud9 trying to get Scrap from Toronto Ultra, th that does mean we could see some craziness happen over the next couple weeks and months in off season. Let's switch on over to our handy dandy roster mania tracker here, and let's talk about some predictions and updates for what's happening. Now, this should be a accurate, most updated list. Uh, Seattle Surge released Brezzy and Hook. Boston, at least according to Ben J. Nassim and Easy Max spreadsheet, uh, only Snoopy is contracted to them, so there's a bunch of spots there. I'd move my camera real quick so you can see Miami. We they have these five as far as we know, right? Obviously, adding Rencore. LA Thieves, who knows if they're going to change. As a Thieves fan, I don't want to be the one to change them myself, but you never really know. Maybe they try to throw out something at Sid, being as he's a free agent. But let's do some predictions and talk about what could potentially happen in a realistic world, but also obviously have some fun with it and do some hot takes. So, Honestly, with Sib coming out of this team, it's looking like I really do think they're going to bring in Scrap. I don't know what the buyout for Scrap is going to look like, right? This thing could be absolutely insane. But you don't tell Sib he can explore options if you're not feeling pretty confident about replacing him with someone you probably feel is better. And to me, that option is Scrap. Now, the real wrench in the situation here would be if Scrap is available, if Toronto is willing to part ways with them. What if a team like FaZe tried to make a move, right? What if a team like FaZe said, let's try to upgrade Scrap or, or try to upgrade Draza into Scrap? That would throw a whole wrench in the situation. But for now, we're going to keep FaZe and uh, Optic because I really think they stick. But now for C9 and Ultra, this would put them in an interesting situation, right? If Scrap does come over to this team and you got Scrap, Hydra, Skies, and Kismet, what happens for the other two, right? Skies and Kiz, I feel like one of them probably would also go. But honestly, who really knows? And then for Toronto, do they just full-on blow it up, full rebuild mode? Do they keep two or one of these players and rebuild around them? Honestly, what I feel like could happen here, and I don't know how realistic it is because I'm not sure what buyouts look like for the Toronto players, but I feel like I could see Kismet coming out and Kleenex coming in to this Cloud9 team, or potentially Envoy instead of Kleenex. I think both of them could work. But I can see this roster being the C9 roster heading into Black Ops 6. You got amazing slaying with Hydra and Scrap. Obviously, you're two superstars. You got Skies that'll play the slower backline role, is willing to obviously play the objective. And then Kleenex, who I think had one of the best years, if not the best year of his career this past season at MW3. And then that also puts Toronto in an interesting spot, right? Insight tweeted out he's a restricted free agent. Envoy is a restricted, even though he has not tweeted it out. So, Honestly, I feel like Toronto would probably would probably blow it up to some extent. So what I'm going to do is I'm honestly going to take all these guys out. I'm going to put I'm going to put Envoy down here. We're going to take Insight out as well and we're going to refresh the Toronto Ultra just to have some fun with. It. But the first thing I want to look at here is this Seattle Surge team because I think this is a pretty underrated potential top 4, you know, break into the top 4 type team, right? Two rookies that both had solid campaigns, especially Abuza once he got on that AR, uh potentially rookie of the year, depends who you ask, right? Um but I think with O4 to Booza looking for a flex and another sub, this is a really interesting spot. And I think potentially a realistic option here, number one is Sib. Now, obviously, Sib and O4 have that beef, the little man thing. I don't know how serious that is. I feel like that's something they could easily squash if they haven't already. Um, but I think Abuza and Sib would be an absolutely disgusting duo. Abuza playing a bit slower, a bit more in the hill. But obviously, we know he's, he's capable of getting his kills. And then Sib just absolutely slaying out. And then another player who I feel like would fit on this team 
Uh, be maybe a bit more of the dirty work player while 04 plays kind of that more bang out frontline entry sub role would be Envoy from the Toronto Ultra. I feel like this team would be a low key team that could be top six, top four, pretty much the entire season. Now, like I said earlier, I guess there's a possibility that maybe LA Thieves try to make a play for Sib, try to bring back Envoy, uh, but we're going to keep Thieves the same, and I kind of like this Surge roster going forward. But now we have a couple open spots, and honestly, a lot of freedom to play with with a bunch of these players down here. I want to look at the Carolina Royal Ravens up next, who obviously still have Gwyn under contract. Now, Ravens, LAG, even Boston could potentially not even be in the league next year, right? There were rumors that you know, teams like SSG or Liquid or Fnatic or Genji are trying to get into the league and those teams are potentially the ones out. But for now, we're just going to pretend like they're still in the league. So for the Ravens building around Gwyn, a potential roster, honestly, that I'm looking at here when it comes to, um, when it comes to potentially his sub duo here, I kind of think I want to throw Kiz on here. I still think Kiz is a player that will get on a solid team. I, I, if you look at what's available, right? I don't think he goes to Ultra. I don't know if I'd see him going to Rocker, maybe, but LAG, Boston, I don't think he goes to either of those franchises. So I think Kiz and Gwyn, Kiz being, you know, more of a frontline player and Gwyn being more of a slayer could potentially work as a duo. And then you get into the ARs. I think Attach on this team could potentially also be a good one. I could see Attach getting on a solid roster again this year. Uh, obviously had a great season this past year. And then for that flex role on this team, I mean, there's a bunch of options if you look at the bottom, right? We could look at someone like Geo, who Attach just played with. You could look at someone maybe like Paul X who could play a flex role, Temp, Brack. I mean, there's a whole bunch of options, but honestly, I think I'm going to bring in Geo to this team. I think Geo and Attach were a solid AR duo. Now, they did kind of underperform on land, but I could see those two teaming up with Gwyn and Kiz and honestly making a top six contending roster. Now, let's talk about the Minnesota Rocker because in my last video, I built them an EU roster. I had Linz, Cobra, Hixie, and Insight. I still think, honestly, Insight fits on this team. I think when you just look at Insight, right, he's easily a top four caliber player. But given what the league looks like, I don't see what top four team he'd end up on unless he stays on Toronto and they rebuild solely around him or maybe around him in Kleenex. I don't know what they would do here. But for our situation, we're blowing up Toronto to have some fun with it. I'm going to put Insight on this team here to be sort of a, a little bit more of a veteran presence, right? He's been in the league for a while now and a really good main AR with Cobra as his flex duo. And then to round out this team, I don't know, you know, what players are friends, what players aren't friends, things like that. But a player I absolutely think would fit with Linz and is deserving of being on a roster is Nero. I think Nero is, is a frontline type of SMG player and Linz can be more of that kind of slay around the map and sort of get the kills when he can. That's when he was at his best is when he was teaming with Vivid, in my opinion. And Vivid and Nero are very similar players. They're both just, they're just banging it out constantly. And I kind of think this Rocker team is another team that at least if Cobra and Linz play well, right? Linz going into his second year, Cobra would be a rookie. I think this team could honestly be pretty good. But now we come down to our final three rosters. And I think I got to go with Toronto next because Toronto, I would imagine, is going to at least build a solid roster if they're not going to be, you know, top four contenders if they are getting rid of scrap. So I think honestly for Ultra, I might go like some sort of veteran led younger team to sort of do something that maybe we've seen them do in the past where they take a chance on some young players that look like they have high upside like scrap but they also aren't afraid to have some vets in like bance or like kleenex and insight honestly at this point in their careers to kind of you know add maybe a bit of leadership and mentorship so what i'm going to do here is i'm going to give them encourage obviously encourage one of the most hyped up potential rookies 18 year olds in challengers it would be kind of crazy for encourage to come right into the league after only turning 18 what a couple months ago but I really could see it happening, and I think, you know, with him being, at least in my knowledge, I'm not a Challengers expert, the most hyped up young player in, or 18-year-old in Challengers, I could see it happening. And then to pair up someone with him as his AR duo, someone that I think maybe could still have a shot in the league, and I definitely think is a great veteran leader, I'm going Slasher, man. I know some people think Slasher doesn't have it in him anymore to be in the league. I personally disagree. I definitely think Slasher is good enough to still be in the league. You bring him on here. You have him play with Encourage as his, a his AR duo, like I just said. And, you know, Slasher obviously being a very long time vet. Encourage being a rookie, I think could potentially be a pretty good duo for BO6. But then we need some sub players on this team. I know they showed Bance in their last video. I really don't think he's coming on to this team as a player. I think maybe he'd be coming on as like a coach. Maybe he is going to retire and decide to coach. I don't see him getting into the league as a player right now, but you never really know, right? Obviously, we know he's a fan favorite in Toronto. And whether he's coming in as a player or he's coming in as a coach or that whole thing where he sat down on the couch at the end of their last video and was like, it feels good to be doing these again. Maybe it's all just bait. Who really knows? 
But looking at, you know, kind of what Bants might look for this roster, I could see him getting Hixie back on this team low-key. I could see him bringing in Hixie to be that dirty work player to get him another shot in the league. Um, obviously, we know they're friends, so I could see this potentially coming back. And then lastly for this Toronto team, honestly... Does this feel realistic for Toronto? Probably not. They might just keep scrap and, and have a godlike team again next year. But with just the experiment we're going on here, we need another sub to kind of be a bit more of a slayer around Hixie. And I kind of think potentially that player could be vivid. Um, I don't know, right, obviously how this roster works, like, their inter your interpersonal connections among these players is kind of a mix and match roster but i do think vivid has high slaying upside obviously you live and die by vivid he's either frying or he's getting fried um but vivid with hixie and then encourage and slasher behind them could potentially be a somewhat young and also somewhat veteran team that toronto could look to sort of try to build encourage into that next superstar but then still potentially compete maybe with a couple changes throughout the year. Honestly, for Ultra, if they do get rid of Scrap, I have no idea what's going to happen for them. So really, don't look at my Toronto team very seriously. This is just a mix and match. But then we're left with Boston and LAG. With Boston, they still have Snoopy under contract. I think that makes sense. But who do they bring in around him? Obviously, we know Boston's not afraid to take shots on young talent. And what I think I'm going to do is I'm going to bring in Super from Challengers. He's a Spanish Challengers player. And uh, I think I wouldn't be surprised if Boston brought in, you know, one or two more rookies to play alongside Snoopy. Especially because they're probably trying to save some money this year. And rookies and Challengers players would, of course, be cheaper. But then for Boston, a sub duo with Snoopy. Snoopy is probably more of like an entry type of sub. But I do think he could be a slayer. But I think maybe potentially someone who will probably get a shot in the league once again to start the year uh, is probably Hook, right? I definitely think he's a bit underwhelming this year, but everyone in all my videos and comments when I talk about this is like, where's Hook? Why is he not on your rosters? So I'm going to listen to you guys. I'm going to put Hook on this Boston team to be a bit more of maybe the Slayer with Snoopy being the frontliner. And then last but not least, I believe this team would need a flex because like I said, I think S Super is a main AR. And I'm not sure. Honestly, there's a bunch of different options in here for players that I think could potentially work. Um, but let's go with a fun pick here. We're going to go Illy. We'll have the Illy Hook duo team up once again. We obviously know Illy has slaying capabilities. If everything's all good with him behind the scenes, I could see him getting back on a team. But then after all of this, it leaves us with just LAG at the end. And I mean, that's how it is every single year. But there's a bunch of players down here I think are deserving of being on a team. So what kind of roster can I build? I think to kick it off, I'm going Tej, bro. I think Tej had a really solid season. I can see Tej being, uh, you know, one of the foundation pieces for LAG to start. But then for his sub duo, I'm bringing back an LAG player from this past year. I'm going Estriel. I think Estriel was a solid rookie, right? Obviously, he got let go, and then he joined G2 slash Rocker for EWC. I can see him coming back. I think he was good enough to come back. Now we definitely get in a super interesting spot, right? I think Diamond Con is another player who is on this team who should be deserving of being on a team. But then you also got someone like Beans who could come onto this team. I mean, you got guys like Johnny. Fame, honestly, I think maybe had a bit of an underrated year. You got other rookies like Dylan Rex that could come in. I mean, you got Awakening in here. You got RCs and Clayster, two obviously world championship veterans. You also got Paul X, Cami, some guys that were down in Challengers that could also get in the league. I actually think what I'm going to do, I'm going to take back one of the things I said. I'm going to put Slasher back on this LAG team and put Beans down here. I know Beans and Hixie are good friends. Beans, obviously, if Bance is maybe a coach, I think is friends with him as well. And I'm going to put Slasher on this team back to LAG, reunited with Tej. Then LAG would need some flex player to round out this roster. And like I said, I think there's a bunch of options here of players that are probably pretty deserving. But we'll put Diamond Con back on this team. I don't know if Diamond Con and Estria want to team together again. I really don't know any of that, but I think Diamond Con was deserving of being on a roster, so I'm going to throw him on one. But these are my teams right now as of August 30th. Like I said, these are just predictions. I, I doubt any of this is going to be right. This is all just for fun. At the end of the day, don't take this too serious, especially this Toronto Ultra team. This, I don't know what the hell is going on down here, because if they do get rid of Scrap and Kleenex and they clean house, I don't know what goes on with them. But let me know what you think about these. Who do you think is definitely going to be in the league that I don't have on this list? I think, honestly, a lot of these guys down here should be in the league, but... That's just how it is, man. Optic aren't changing. Phase aren't changing. Miami look relatively set. Who knows what's going to happen with LAT. Falcons are already set. There's not enough spots in the league. We need more teams, bro. We need more teams. But this is what I'm thinking, man. Let me know what you think down below. Sub for more CDL content. BO6 streams. By the time you're watching this, I might even be live playing BO6 right now. So definitely check that out. With all that being said, I appreciate the support. And I'll see you all in the next one.